it's just like so crazy to me how this very short series of events were so important in the deciding of whether I would have to extend my graduation and take an entire another semester or just take these online classes. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anne Marie. If you don't know that by now, then it looks like you should probably subscribe to this channel so that you can expect regular videos from me. That was a good one, huh? So I've been really excited to film this video because I haven't filmed or posted in so long, which I will kind of explain why in this video, but most importantly, I will be sharing some really great insight that I learned that I really wish I had known to make the best decision for really just what I want to get out of my college career. I have a feeling my hair will be changing a lot in this video, so just letting you know. I personally feel like I have done college really strategically and kind of well. Like I mentioned in my why I left college video, which if you haven't seen, definitely go check it out. I said in that video that I really see college as kind of a milestone that I need to kind of reach and attain because I know that it'll bring me closer to what I want to do as my future career even if I don't know what that is right now. If you have the same mindset as me, or if you think you'll ever be in the same situation, then I think that this video will be really helpful to watch. This all started when I took a leave of absence for a semester. Basically from that, I just knew that I would have to make up those units somehow. So not only am I missing an entire semester unplanned, but I went to school in Alaska. And I don't know if it was just me or my friend group, but no one really stressed the importance of taking the uh, AP test. I took 11 AP or IB classes and I didn't take a single AP test. So I came into college with zero units. And on top of that, I had not been taking the max amount of units that I could have been. In my last semester that I was attending USC, I actually only took 14 units. That's two away from being a part-time student, I think. With all of this and my leave of absence, I actually thought it would be impossible to graduate on time. But I went to my college academic advisor. Honestly, before this, I did not think that they were helpful, but they are so helpful. So get to know your academic advisor. I went to her and I like kind of told her what was up. And then she kind of explained that I could graduate on time as scheduled, even with taking the leave of absence, only if I took eight units of elective credit specifically, no other units would transfer. And if I took these classes before the fall semester at USC started. So first of all, before moving on from that, I just had absolutely no idea that taking summer classes was a possibility other than like only USC summer classes, which are the exact same cost. But it's also good to know that you could take classes that transfer at other colleges. Even if I hadn't planned on taking a leave of absence, I could have graduated early, like by taking classes in the summer somewhere else. And that might be obvious, I don't even know. Basically, after talking to her, my options were to either take summer classes at USC or to take transferable courses at a college elsewhere. So, of course, I chose the latter because I wrote this down. Let me just tell you guys. At USC, if I were to take a class in the summer, one unit is $1,800 for one unit. So, yeah, I would have needed to take eight units and that would have been eight times 1,800, which is 14000 and $400 for eight units in the summer. The next option was to take community college classes and in California for an out-of-state resident, basically to take nine units, it would have been around $2,700. That is a whole lot cheaper, so I decided to go with the community college option. So before, you know, choosing a college or courses, I had to keep in mind that I was still working until mid-June, so I couldn't really be physically in a classroom. And I also had my travels to Ibiza planned, so I opted to take or look for classes online. It seems kind of easy to just like attend a college or a community college, but enrolling in any college, it's a process. And I wrote down all of the issues that I ran into because I literally ran into so many issues. First of all, out-of-state residents at least in California, have to prove that they're in state. So for one of the colleges that I wanted that was like the cheapest and the high, highest rating, it was called Saddleback, I would have to drive all the way down to Anaheim where it was and then just literally say, this is me. Here's my ID. This is my identity. That was not possible for me because I was working full time and their hours were during my work hours. Another thing is that classes fill up, especially for popular community colleges. Like they go so fast. And also 
you have to make sure that the dates are within like a good time range. My college required my classes to end before the fall classes started. They're all different from just like starting to ending. So you have to keep that in mind. Usually if you're not a student actually going there full time, they give you last priority. So in order to kind of bump up your registration date because they fill up really fast, you have to submit a lot of documents. Like for one of them, I had to submit like some similar classes that I've taken as like kind of prerequisites. Another thing that I ran into with all of the colleges that I tried to enroll in, which were three, was that they have a cap on how many units you're allowed to take. So usually it's like one and a half classes for the summer for some reason. You either have to send in a form of exception and sometimes you have to write a letter. <laughs> there are like so many things that you could run into. So you thought I was done, but I'm totally not because this is a process, like I said. So after you find a college that you want to enroll in, you have to make sure you know which classes are transferable. So like for me, it was just electives. And then you have to make sure that the classes that you're picking are approved for transfer by your university. One of my hometown friends actually went abroad. He spent his first year going to school in the States and then he wanted to transfer to a different school. He tried to come back, I guess, and none of the classes that he took abroad would transfer to his old college. And so he would have to do four more years or three more years in order to get his degree. You really need to talk to your academic advisor beforehand, even if you do think that you know, like sometimes there are like rules and things that you just don't really know about or you're not aware of. So that is super, super helpful. So all of this stuff was all good. I had finally chosen a college or a community college to take my online classes at and it was called Pasadena City College. Pasadena is close, a lot closer to me than Anaheim and I'd be able to go there if I needed to uh, without taking a ton of time. So I had done everything that I needed to do. I paid tuition, I sent in uh, forms to have a good registration date, I made sure that they were transferable to my university, and then I also registered for these classes that I wanted to take. I actually called them three different times because they didn't require me to physically go into the office and I was like, is this normal? Do you think that I'll have any problems uh, registering because I'm an out-of-state resident? And literally every single person that I talked to were like, yeah, you're totally fine to take all of your classes, no problem. So I was basically all good to go. And then the day before these classes start, which is kind of in later mid-June, I go on to the portal to see if there are any syllabi or anything that I should be doing at the moment and nothing's there and that's kind of weird because there should at least be like a syllabus for each class. And so I go on to check my schedule and somehow every single one of the classes that I had registered for disappeared and was dropped from my schedule. Of course. So I call them up asking them what happened to these classes. Absolutely no one knows what to tell me or like what happened. They're all just like, are you sure you didn't drop the classes? And I was like, why would I do that? I already paid for these classes. Like I really need to take them. They just disappeared somehow. I was super confused and I was eventually transferred to the director of admissions for this community college, which is literally the highest person that I could have possibly been talking to for this issue. And guess what she says? I am so sorry to hear about this. Honestly, there's nothing we can do for you here. According to the federal law and Title IV, I don't know why I remember these things, students who are not in-state residents cannot take online classes at community colleges and we just heard about the crackdown of this law or rule yesterday. Did you not get an email about it? I told someone to send an email about it. And I was just like, no, I did not get an email about it. And it would have been really helpful to know this because it was mid June at this point And a lot of the classes that I had been looking at had already started like weeks earlier. So basically at this point, I'm like, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. All of the classes that I've been looking at so far have started so long ago. And even if they haven't started, all the spots have been taken. So I wouldn't even be able to register for them anyways. So I was basically like, I'm going to have to, you know, take another semester at USC. I'm gonna have to find a place to live. I was very, very worried. I texted my parents and I was like, I'm screwed. I emailed my academic advisor and told her what happened. She very quickly responded. Like, I love my academic advisor. Like, she was literally so helpful in this process. She responded and basically told me that several colleges offer accelerated courses, which basically means that, you know, you take like a semester long course and just cram it into a few weeks or like five weeks or so. And she said that BYU, or she also recommended CSU classes. Luckily, 
that was also an option and I actually did the entire process for all of those schools too. Like I found classes that worked and was pretty much ready to go. The only downside to doing that instead of a community college is that it would cost $7,000 instead of the $2,700. So that was kind of stressful for me and very disappointing. The whole situation with the community college is just literally not telling me what had happened. And I actually never even saw an email go out after that or like an explanation email. So meanwhile, while all this was happening, I went back home to Alaska. It was a planned visit, a little vacation. I love going there in the summer, especially it's really nice. <laughs> My mom had suggested looking into the public college there, which is University of Anchorage, Alaska, to see if they had any courses available that I could take. And so I just looked on their schedule of online classes. I was like, there's no way that I'm gonna find anything available. And lo and behold, they had their very last session of their accelerated five week courses going on. But of course, with my luck, the classes had started a week ago and the very last day to register, or not even register, to drop or add classes after you registered was the next day. Even after a week of missing a, a class that's a semester long, a lot of professors don't let you join. It really depends on the professor, of course, and the class um, and where they are in their course. So I literally spent two whole days looking at every single course that would transfer to USC and then emailing every single one of the professors of that course and basically I sent an email that was pretty detailed but not too long because no one likes long emails basically explaining my situation saying that I wouldn't be able to graduate on time if I didn't have these classes or didn't wasn't able to find classes to take this late and then I also made sure to say that I knew that it was very late into the semester or the course but that I was a really hardworking student and that I was a really good student and that I promised to be a really great addition to their classroom. Even after that, I still ran into so many problems with just literally trying to register to the college and it would have taken like a, it was a three day process, but I was like, no, I really need this now. <laughs> three of the professors that I emailed let me into their classes. One of them did it on the first day. It was super easy. She added me with no problem. The next one did it kind of midday on the very last day that I could possibly register. But then the last one, he, very shortly at like 3 p.m. he said yikes but he basically said that I could join his class but that he was on a flight to Iceland so he couldn't actually add me to the class so I literally had to go to the college it was 4 p.m. which is an hour before they close and then see if they could add me and I also had to pay before that closing time or else I wouldn't be added but basically everything from that point on worked out and even though I literally only need to get a C plus in all of these classes in order to have them count towards transfer credit, I feel like I made a promise in my email of like basically begging them to let me join their classes that I would be a good student. I have all A's in these classes that I literally need a C plus to graduate with. They did me such a huge favor where even if they don't really care, like I feel the need to do really well because that's what I promised them I would do. And on top of all this working out, the tuition, since I'm an in-state resident, was only $2,100 for nine units, which is better than every single option that I had previously. So yay, it all worked out. But yeah, I basically crammed like a semester long course into five weeks and I was a week late. So I literally for like probably a week straight was sitting down day to night just working on these uh, assignments. My life just like flew by because I was literally doing this the whole time. So yeah, it's been a lot and that is why I have not been making videos because that was the point of the story to tell you guys why I've been gone, but not really. It's just like so crazy to me how this very short series of events were so important in the deciding of whether I would have to extend my graduation and take an entire another semester or just take these online classes for four weeks and then just be done with it and literally pay like one fifteenth of the cost. I just wanted to make this video because if you're trying to find ways to save money or if you just find yourself in the same position as I was where you like took a semester off or just you know didn't come in with any units or think you don't have enough units to graduate on time or want to graduate early. I think this is really helpful to know that you can make those up in ways other than taking them during the fall and spring semester. And of course, I'm sure that every single college is very different in their rules. I honestly, now that I've filmed that entire video, I have no idea if that is a helpful video to post on my channel or if it's literally the most useful video, useless video that I've ever posted. Give this video a thumb up 
if you think it was helpful or you liked just hearing the story. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!